In this video, I'm going to redesign the new Mustang into a C8 rival, turning it into a mid-engine car. This is going to be extremely difficult to get right, but I think it's going to look absolutely epic when it's done. I'm going to make a coupe and a spider version in this redesign. And did you know that Ford actually made a mid-engine Mustang back in 1967? This was called the Mustang Mach 2 concept. It was based on the first generation Mustang and featured a sleek aerodynamic body with a Barchetta-like design and a long hood. The car was powered by a V8 engine and featured fully independent suspension as well as disc brakes on all four wheels. This was a sort of a show-off by Ford uh, showing what they could build and the design and engineering capabilities of Ford at the time. Unfortunately, it was never put into production and it's definitely remembered as one of the coolest Mustang concepts of all time. And that's kind of what we want to revive in this video. The reason why we want to turn a front wheel drive, front engine uh, car into a mid-engine car is mostly because of balance so you don't end up in the ditch and if you happen to be in a car accident you want to have the proper representation and that brings me to today's sponsor morgan and morgan in 2020 there were over 5 million car crashes that's more than 15,000 a day or 600 an hour and those in an accident can be entitled to more than you think did you know you don't need a lot of money to hire a lawyer when you're injured you deserve compensation the size of your law firm matters. Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury law firm with over 800 lawyers and over 100 offices nationwide. The best part, Morgan & Morgan's fee is completely free unless they win your case. Over 3 million people trust Morgan & Morgan and getting started is easy. You can check out the link in the comment section for more information. Thanks to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring this video and now let's get back to the redesign. Now looking at the new Mustang, I'm a huge fan of it. I think it looks looks great I did a quick little redesign of it here on the channel I'm gonna pop that up right here the reason I wanted to make a redesign is because I think the rear end looks a little weak in my opinion I want to add some structure to it more in line with the previous generation Mustang I think that looks more muscle car-y but it has a st still has a 2.3 liter turbo 4 you also have the 5 liter v8 with a manual transmission and rear wheel drive which is fantastic and then you have the dark horse mustang with up to 500 horsepower in the interior as i've talked about before we now have this big gauge cluster uh big screen it's it's a massive glass panel which combines a 12.4 inch gauge cluster and the 13.2 inch infotainment system unfortunately they didn't implement the dual wave design in the interior that we have in so many mustangs which is a little bit sad but overall i think it's a really cool looking car and i'm sure this will be a great value specifically the ecoboost with a manual transmission it's not going to be too expensive the current one starts at twenty nine thousand dollars so maybe a little bit more for the new version so let's have a look at the reason why i want to create a mid-engine mustang so here we have the c uh, the corvette and the new mustang at the bottom and the reason why i think it would be really interesting to see what the new mustang would look like as a mid-engine car is because i think it already has the graphics and the fundamentals for making it uh, for, for turning into a very cool looking mid-engine car i want to show you some of the differences that we're going to have to make up here clearly mid-engine layout and the reason i'm saying that is because we have the greenhouse sitting almost right in the middle in between the uh, the wheelbase the axles of the car and that is of course because we want to have the space in the back here to fit the engine the engine now sits here instead of up here and that also creates a very much sleeker design of the front end of the car in pretty much any mid-engine car you can see that how fast this dips in the front end. It creates a very narrow, tight, sharp front end in comparison to the Mustang, which is obviously the front engine needs to house the engine up there. And then at this point, it starts to dip basically at the end point of the V8. How much space the V8 is taken up depends on where you can start to pull down the front end of the car. So this is something that we're going to have to change if we're going to make a mid-engine Mustang. I'm not going to make a... Uh, quick lazy redesign where i just take the greenhouse this part and move it forward a couple of inches 
if we want to create a proper looking Mustang mid-engine car, we need to have certain rules in place. And one of those is to create a lower sitting hood like we have in the C8. Second thing is that the rear end, usually on mid-engine cars, the overhang in the rear is a lot shorter than if it was a front-engine car. You can see that here as well. It's a very short overhang in the rear of the Corvette, but in the Mustang, we still have a proper uh, tail hanging out in the rear end. Looks good for a two-door coupe front-engine car, but it won't work on a uh, mid-engine car, not in my opinion, at least, unless you have a Le Mans-style mid-engine car, which also has a very long, um, stretched-out overhang in the rear for aerodynamic reasons. We don't need that here. I'm gonna shorten this uh, overhang in the rear, and then I'm gonna take the Ford GT air intake that has this wing, sort of a C-pillar that has a wing, and try to figure out how I can implement that design into this redesign that we're gonna do. But let's jump into the redesign here and let's see how, how this Mustang is gonna turn out. I think, as I said, the Mustang, the new one, looks fantastic. I really love the front end. I think they made a great job adding more muscle car feel because as I've said before, the last remaining muscle car today, which also outsold the Mustang and the Camaro in 2022, it's a design that came out in 2007, and that is, of course, the Challenger. It outsold numerous upgrades from the Corvette and the Mustang over that past, uh, over these past years. But the Challenger has ba essentially stayed the same. The only difference is, I think, in 2015 is when they made the um, the facelift, added LED lights. But the overall shape of the car has not changed in the same volume that the Camaro and the Mustang has come out with new models over this time. And I think the reason being why it's selling so well is because people w still want to have a proper muscle car on the market. And there is only really one choice, that is the Challenger. So what Ford did with the new Mustang, creating a more horizontal, more uh, almost architectural basic front end, and that has all the muscle car feels to it. It's, it, it's turning more into a muscle car territory, while previously the Mach 1, for example, feels more like a sports car when you look at the front end. So how do we turn this into a mid-engine car? As I said, we need to lower the front end and have a more swooping line going downwards and make the front end more pointy. There's really no, not a big reason to have huge air intakes in the front end, but the thing is, if we want to make a Mustang, if we want to make this into a mid-engine Mustang, I think we need to retain the grille, but it's gonna be a lot smaller because we don't need the same cooling in the front. We do, however, need, need cooling in the rear. If that's where I'm gonna add the uh, Ford GT air intake to kind of funnel air into the rear end and have that be attached to the, the, um, the muscle line, the fender line that goes on above the rear wheels, have that cut into the corner and meet the intake right in the corner and create a very sharp angle of the of the intake. In addition, we need to move the entire greenhouse forward. Have, basically, we want to have the entire body of the car, the shell of the car, slide forward on top of the same wheelbase that we have on the front engine Mustang. I also want to work a little bit with these wheels. I do love the design of these wheels. I just think they don't fill out the wheelhouses in the way I want. So I'm going to make them a little bigger, may maybe look like it's been lowered an inch or two. And for the spider version, there's a lot of changes you need to do here if you want to make a spider version as well. First of all, you need to have a lot beefier uh, windshield frame because if this rolls over that frame is supposed to hold the entire weight of the car and not collapse and crush you if you roll over it. And we also need to build up the, uh, the, the, the body behind the seats where the retractable roof would sit under. I want to have something that connects and goes a little higher up into the seats in the rear. That also creates a lot of muscle in the rear end because that's underneath that panel is where the big 5 liter V8 engine sits if that was the engine they would choose for a car like this. One detail that I think make a big difference here is what we talked about previously is to move in the, the, the rear overhang a little bit and stretch out the front end. When we do that, that gives it these mid-engine proportions that uh, you don't really notice and how that affects the visual uh, perception of the car turning it into a mid-engine car by reducing the overhang in the rear, 
stretching out the overhang in the front and lower the front down a little bit as well. Now, the reason why I think this would be a good idea for Ford to do is the same reason why I think it was a great idea for Corvette to turn it into a mid-engine car. That is... They Chevy felt like they pushed the limit of performance as far as they can push it with a front engine uh, architecture, and that's why they wanted to put a turn the C8 into a mid engine car. Because usually, mid engine cars are more balanced than a front engine car because all the heavy parts sit within the, the, the axles within the wheelbase, for example, the transmission and the engine, creating more of a balanced car specifically on the track. So, it would be nice to see. Ford creating something like this, maybe as a concept or just have some fun in the design departments to see what they could actually come up with to compete with a C8 Corvette.